we're back on this truck again. And let me show you what I've done today. Uh, I'm gonna get ready, I'm getting ready to set the body down on the frame because I need to see where I'm at and before I can go any further. But before I set the body down on there, let me show you guys what I've decided to do here, what I've done, I should say. Okay, so after much uh, brain cell burning last night, I decided that I think I'd be better off to go with the Rust D kit, which I am glad I did because um, I'm going to show you how these brackets go so you guys can see that. So you got an L bracket here, an L bracket on the bottom, and then this bracket here coming out from the mount. And you bolt all those together, and that's what uh, mounts your cross member for your transmission to your frame, right? There's one over there, too. You can see it. You might be able to see a little better how it's set up from that angle. See there? So there's, a, there's an L bracket there and an L bracket down below, and they actually wrap around the frame, and then you've got your bracket bolted in the middle that comes out. So that's how that goes. Instructions didn't give very good pictures. So this is showing you guys how that goes. Now, one thing you might notice here right off the bat is my choice of cross member, okay? That's a piece of pipe. Now, I will tell you that Russ recommends um, tube steel, square, square or tube steel. Uh, I think it's inch by inch and a half or inch by inch tube, squeal, tube steel. And I, I don't know if you guys have priced tube steel, but it's three times the price or at least twice the price of this black pipe. I went to, I went to Home Depot, or I'm sorry, Lowe's, and I bought enough black pipe. I bought a, if you guys look over there on the wall, see that piece of black pipe sticking up there? That's 10 feet long. I bought that piece and I bought this piece, which is three feet. And I paid $70 for it, okay? Tube steel is easily double that, maybe even triple, depending on where you live. So this is a lot cheaper, and I personally like the round steel anyhow, because it, it even that that uh, Transdap cross member, you guys remember, I showed you that last night, it, it had round, it, it's made out of tube steel also. So I like this a lot better. I think it looks better. And the wall thickness on this, I checked online, and this stuff will support a thousand pounds for every foot. So if you got a one foot piece in there, it'll support a thousand pounds. This, I, I cut this piece here, this three foot piece, I cut it down to 32 inches. So it'll easily support this transmission and the back of the motor, no problem at all. So if you guys wanna save money in the future, especially for your bed, you know, you need a couple of pieces of tube steel to go across those mounts there and then back in the back. You need a piece of tube steel or back there. If you use this black pipe, it's I think it's probably twice as strong as, as tube steel because the wall thickness on it is at least twice as thick as tube steel. And it's half the price. So that's a money saver for you guys. You want to know that. Okay, now, so I've got everything clamped in place. I can't bolt it yet because I've got to get the body on the frame before I can do all that because I need to see how much clearance I got in the firewall because I did look last night at my drive shaft. And I've only got about an inch of drive shaft going into the back of the transmission. That is not enough. I know that already. Here's my uh, urethane mounts that I told you guys about yesterday. So you can see them a little better. They're sitting right on the on the rusty mounts there. They work great. So I'm getting ready to set the body down, okay? Before I do that, I want to go over one more thing. So my drive shaft, as you can see in here, my drive shaft is, is not in the transmission far enough. So I've got a couple options here. One option is I can get Rusty makes a setback plate that'll set back a little further. I think it's four inches. This one here is three. So he makes a setback plate that'll set it back four inches. So if I go back another inch, that's going to help me a ton there. But one other thing about this truck that's kind of cool, and I'm glad I bought it now, now that I figured this out, is it's got what's called cow tracks on it. Okay, see those traction bars down there? Let's try, that, that cow tracks kit is a kit you buy if you're going to race this truck, which... Or, but of course this truck isn't gonna get raced, but it came with the truck So it's kind of a bonus and they're they're pretty expensive But the cool thing about them is if you can see right down there There's a heim joint right there and there's another one right there So worst case scenario if I had to I can take 
the U-bolts loose on the axle and take those traction bars loose and screw them in a little bit and move the axle forward. And I, I think I, I measured last night, I think I could probably get about an inch of forward movement with that axle. And that may not be a bad thing because the wheelbase on these trucks is 118 inches and I just measured this one and then that, it's actually a little over 118. And that may be because when they put this rear end in, they, they didn't put it at 118 inches. Um, this one here is like 118 and like, I want to say a quarter inch, maybe three eighths of an inch. So I could move it forward anyhow and I'm probably going to end up having to. But the good thing about that is the 48 Chevy truck, the wheelbase on it is 116 inches. So if I can move this axle forward an inch, at least an inch, I'll be at about 117 inches there and I'll be a lot closer to having my tire centered on the wheel wells on my truck, which I can adjust the, the bed to make up for that too. But I just need to figure out how much cab space I got because it'd be easier for me to move the engine back than it would be to move the axle forward. But like I said, I may end up moving, I may end up moving both. I don't know. I got I to gotta make that decision when the time comes. But what I want to do now, I want to drop this, this truck body down on the frame and see where I'm at as far as the firewall goes. And again, remember, remember two things. First of all, this, these plates right there, those plates are three inch setback plates. And I think Rusty makes a four inch one too. And the other thing you need to remember is if you watch my other videos on this truck, you can see right, and to get it where you can see it, right? Right there, see that that little indentation in the firewall right there? All right, let me go over here. My, my camera wants to focus on my finger and not the firewall. All right, um, hold on a second. Never mind, I don't know where it's at. Okay, so if you guys have watched one of the videos, Russ sent me a picture of one of these trucks with this engine on it and the, the, the uh, valve cover on the passenger side is actually offset from the driver's side. It's offset backwards a little bit because obviously your cylinders, your, your connecting rods, you know, when they're in the cylinder, you've got the distance on one side set back from the other side. So the, the uh, right bank on this engine is set back further. So this valve cover on this side is going to be more likely to hit the firewall than the other side. You remember right last year I made a little video where I, this came out and bent in like that. I just cut it out and I flipped it 180 degrees and then I stuck it so the bend out here was now here and it pushed this, pushed this back a little bit. So now I've got a little bit more space here. It's probably going to help me today. But I'm hoping I can get this body down on here and if I need to I can get the, the longer plates from right here. And we can move the engine back another inch. Of course, then I got to wait for the shipping to me, so I don't know how long that's going to take. But it is what it is, right? Okay. So now, if I explain that to you, let's uh, drop this body down. And I can't, I can't get this body, I can't get this body on the frame with all four of these arms. But the cool thing is, is this lift is a little bit off. So that arm back there is. Um, not even touching so I can actually take that arm and move it out and then drop it down with three arms let me show you <laughs> all right here we go see this arm here I can just move that out so it's not in my way so now I gotta figure out um, I gotta drop it down and you have to roll this thing forward to get the front mounts to go in so I rolled it forward and then when I get it down low enough I gotta roll it back to get the mounts lined up Let's go down with it and see how close we are. Oh. Something else I wanted to tell you guys, too. I'll tell you here in a second. Almost to that point. One other thing I wanted to 
tell you guys, this might help you make a decision in, in if you're doing this. The mounts, well, here, let me just take this off the stand because you can't see this. These mounts, I'll show you this one over here. See that? See all the holes in that? So you, if you set that on that top hole, it's going to drop this cab down, you know, four inches from where it is now. So if you would like a lowered truck, if you want your truck to be sitting low on the ground, then that's what you do. But the problem with that is the lower you set it, the more modifications you've got to do the firewall and the floor pan to get your transmission to fit and to get your engine not to hit the firewall. So you got to remember that. I, I got mine as high as it'll go because I want, my, I want my running boards to be above the frame. I mentioned that before. So if you look at this mount here, you'll see that the mount is above the frame just a little bit. So when I mount my running boards in those mounts, my running boards are going to be slightly above the frame. So the frame is going to scrape the ground before the running boards will. And to me, that's a good idea because I don't want to damage my running boards. Okay. And I'm sure Bo doesn't either. And I'm glad that Bo doesn't like the slammed look because I don't really either. All right. So let's drop this uh, cab down a little more. Where are we at? How are we looking? I've got to check my, my uh, frame here and see if I'm still in place. It looks like I am. Uh, I'll probably have to turn the side wheels a little bit and I roll back. Check the other side. I'm going to hit the frame now. Oh, yeah. I'm off the frame quite a bit there, so I'm good. Okay, so let's drop it on down so let's get a little closer. Alright, that's pretty close, right? Yeah, yeah that's pretty close. Let's see if I can roll this frame back to the building there. Uh, I'm going to turn my wheel just a little bit. I don't know where that came from. Maybe the rear mount. Rear mount might be touching already. Oh. Yeah, that rear mount's touching. I gotta raise it up just a little bit. That should be enough. I think I saw it move. Okay, let's try to slide it in there. Alright, let me get some bolts. One thing you're going to want to know, if you use those polyurethane mounts that I got, you're going to need longer bolts. The ones Rusty tell you to get aren't long enough, so these are 7 16 by 5 inch bolts. Okay, you're gonna need four of them for your body mount. All right. That bolt's in.
sitting on the body so I can't move it enough to adjust it. So I'm going to raise it up just a smidge. Look at one more thing here. Man, and I can drop the body down. Should be pretty close. see a problem no surprise so my transmission is hitting hitting my floor right there so I'm definitely gonna have to modify that because my front mounts aren't even touching so that's definitely gonna have to be a modification made um, can see it there it's not a lot there's a lip there I don't know I don't think I don't think trimming that lips gonna be enough I don't know I may have to cut that piece out and and reshape it and weld it back in but it's you can see that right there it's it's touching right on the, but look at the look at the room I've got I mean this side here I got a ton of room obviously that side there I got of course as I drop as I drop the body down it's gonna 
lessen the amount of room that I have, obviously, make it less. But so now I got a problem of modifying the transmission. I didn't think I was gonna have to modify the transmission hump. So I definitely got to do that. I need to mark that with something. And then I'll have to go in there. Looks like I'm gonna have to, once I cut that lip out, then it's gonna be touching all the way around. So I may end up having to just cut a section of it out and weld it back in later. I don't know. Doesn't, doesn't look too promising to me. I don't want to beat it up with a hammer. So it's definitely touching. All right, so now we, now we kind of got an idea of where we're at with the body and the frame and the motor and all that. Um, and I've got the, I can tell you the transmission mounts, the rusty mounts, I've got them as low as they'll go in my drive shaft. You can see my drive shaft, it doesn't have a ton of angle on it, okay? So it's not, it's not super dra dramatic, but you do, you do want a little bit of angle on the drive shaft. You don't want the drive shaft to be straight because if you hit a bump and your drive shaft straight, it drives it right straight to the transmission, you'll break the transmission. If you have a little bit of an angle, then when you hit a bump, it allows the drive shaft to move and not ram into the back of the transmission. Other thing you want to remember, let me get a tape measure here. When you're setting up your cross member for your transmission, at least on this one, you got to remember that this uh, pinion is a little bit off center on this thing. And I measured it, and from this side of the frame to the center of the, of the rear axle is 18 and a quarter. Or no, I'm, yeah, that's right, 18 and a quarter. And from this side of the of the frame over to the to the center of the axle is 17 and was it 17 and a half? So I'm three quarters of an inch offset this way. So whenever you set your transmission up there, your distance from one side of the frame to another, you want to have three quarters of an inch further on this side than you do on that side. You don't want it to be dead center. You want it to be you know you got to measure your axle first and see where your axle's at in in relationship to the frame. And then set your front accordingly. So you guys, guys got to remember that. It's a lot of stuff you got to remember to do this. Do this right, okay? All right, guys. Well, so now we've got the body on the frame. Now we can see where we're at with that. And it's obviously going to be a problem because I'm hitting the firewall. So now I have to modify something I didn't think I was going to have to modify. But it's the nature of the beast, right? I'm putting a... 48 Chevy truck on an S10 frame, and neither one of them trucks ever had a V8 engine in them. Neither one of them ever had that transmission. In them. Most of them had a, uh, a what is it, a TH200, you know, tiny little transmission. This is a seven, have 700 R4, it's pretty big. So in a V8 engine, you know, I mean, I'm just trying to conglomerate all this stuff together. It, it takes it takes a lot of thinking and a lot of a lot of measuring and a lot of doing stuff you don't think you're gonna have to do. But it's, it's pretty pretty normal. All right, guys, so I'm going to end it right here. Uh, I'm going to figure out what i got to do with this uh, body, and then I'll come back and show you what I did when I'm done. All right, guys, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. Talk to you later. Bye.